They went and wasted two years. He was treated, blah, 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 but like another therapy. You, you'd have to be in the clinic for that. <laughs> what the hell is wrong with these people? What the hell is Teladoc doing in the number one holding? Anybody who believes that's going to happen is living in a fantasy world. That's what I think. I think companies like Bluebird are, are toast. transplant roughly 20 to 30 percent long-term survival <coughs> it's not zero I, I i'm fairly confident if you have complex karyotype aml or unfavorable risk the long-term survival is, is zero you're not curing any of those patients it's the intermediate risk aml which has always been the hardest decision for me as a transplanter a beyond belief the hardest and when i say intermediate risk aml uh, for this discussion We'll, we'll just keep it, uh, you know, not to get into the diehards of AML, normal karyotype AML uh, without FLT3, you know, uh, we'll, we'll exclude the FLT3 for this discussion. That's a whole nother uh, beef. With those patients, we don't know what to do. And if you look at the NCCN, it says, give chemo. And then it says, high dose or allergenic transplant. It leaves it up to the user, okay? And, uh, and, and, um, <laughs> You well, but, 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 is it, is it but is it possible because you may not have a donor? I mean, is it like possible? Yeah, yeah. So, so yeah. So clearly, but now I will say for those who haven't done transplant, we have a donor now for everyone, basically. Just yeah. about everyone has a haplo donor, which you can use. Uh, you know, a sibling has got a good chance of being a haplo, and all kids are are, are going to be haplo, and parents will be haplo. So in the umbilical cords, we, we it's very rare now where I don't have a donor for anyone. And now you can even use mismatched with post-transplant psi, there's data that you can do that and it can be safely done. So that that argument's not as, as big of a deal anymore. So we usually have donors uh, for everyone. And so the debate becomes whether you consolidate them or you give them a, a consolidation with allergenic transplant. And we have no random, well, we didn't have any randomized data uh, for that. And we, um, we had meta-analysis of, of, of studies that basically allocated, the, it was a genetic randomization. So if they had a donor, like a sibling, they went to transplant. If they didn't, they then went to consolidation. Those studies are okay, but there's some biases that are introduced uh, uh, because of that. Well, maybe if you have a donor, you know, you could find that maybe you're inherently just better risk because of that. You have more support. There's all these things that go into that you don't know the, so it's not true randomized study. And the meta-analysis of that data showed maybe a 10%, 15% benefit of doing allergenic transplant, but it wasn't concrete. And Allogeneic transplants, it's not like CNS prophylaxis, right? I mean, CNS prophylaxis, as I said, is uncomfortable and unpleasant, but it's very unlikely you're going to kill a patient by giving them CNS prophylaxis. Right. When you give allogeneic transplants, even in best case scenario, with a fit patient treatment-related mortality is 10 to 20%, meaning you are going to, I'm going to say it like this because this is true, kill the patient. You may kill a patient with your treatment modality who is otherwise already cured. Like, if you're a transplanter and that decision doesn't, like, make you feel really uneasy about everything, like, and again, not I'm not calling on anyone. I'm always very impressed how cavalier some of my colleagues are at recommending transplant. When what I just said, in the best case scenario, you will kill 10 to 20% of patients with that procedure. 